All right. Welcome to Trailblazing Techs. And today we have Sam Morrow, singer songwriter on with us today. So how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Doing all right. We were just talking how I wrapped up a meeting. Uh, you've been spending the day playing the guitar and kind of hanging out. And so I guess right now during quarantine, is that kind of what you're doing? Just playing music and writing and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, trying to stay active, trying to like stick to some sort of semblance of a schedule, you yeah. know, uh, trying to make myself feel as normal as possible. Um, sure, sure. So how long have you lived in LA? Uh, I've been here about, it'll be nine years, like next wow. month. Wow. I didn't yeah. realize that. And yeah, so, yeah. so what made you kind of just take the leap and move? Cause you're originally from Texas. Uh, we both grew mm -hmm. up in the Houston area. What made you take that leap of faith to just go out to, to LA? Well, um, I had a, so I, I lived in Austin for a bit and then I went back to Houston and then I, uh, I moved to New York city. That's where my girlfriend mm -hmm. at the time lived. And, uh, it kind of chewed me up and spit me out in New York city. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't exactly for me. And I, I was kind of going through stuff in my life too. And, and then I, I moved out here. I just, I don't know. I just like kind of needed a change, you know? And, uh, I don't know. It just seemed like the the natural thing. And I actually went to a drug and alcohol treatment out here in Palm Springs and, mm -hmm. uh, um, about nine years ago. And I just sort of stayed Palm Springs is about two and a half hours from, yeah. from LA, but mm -hmm. I moved to LA and I went to like a, um, halfway house, sober living kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. and I just stayed, you know, I kind of started meeting people and I mean, LA is a great place to live. There's a lot of, creativity and, mm -hmm. and and uh there's a lot of art out here a lot of music and mm -hmm. um you know but at the same time that that could also be a uh that could also be a disadvantage of living out here it's like a little saturated and mm -hmm. um you know you have to kind of sift through the the phonies and um all of that stuff but you know that's kind of that's just part of it that's just life you know it's yeah not, yeah for sure it's and not really you need to la Sure. Absolutely. And so speaking of art and music, um, so how long, how long have you been into music? I mean, we've known each other since middle school, sixth grade or so. And I remember yeah. you being in band. I remember you like being part of your church. Um, but yeah. yeah, how long have you been kind of pursuing music and how much of that has been in your life? So, yeah, I, I, I guess like fifth grade is when I joined band and, you know, I, I kind of, how old are you in fifth grade? Like 10? 12 or is 10? it 10? No, it, I mean, I don't know. I My was niece young. is 10. So. I was young. So I think 10, 11? I think it's like 11 or 11, maybe. Uh, who knows? But <laughs> anyways, yeah, when I joined band, I sort of figured out I liked music a lot. Mm -hmm. no, I, I knew, but I, I figured uh, I figured out I liked playing it. I started playing saxophone mm -hmm. or clarinet and saxophone. <laughs> I made you play clarinet first. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, uh, shortly after that, I, you know, got involved with like playing music at church and, mm -hmm. um, I started playing guitar and, uh, and then I just sort of discovered that I could actually sing a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, and so I just started sort of fostering that and, and started writing some songs and, um, you know, then it just sort of evolved from there. You know, I started playing all different kinds of music and, um, you know, just kind of the natural progression, I guess. Well, I continue to play at church, but, you know, playing in ba bands with friends, like mm -hmm. hardcore, like emo sort of bands and, uh, you know, just like experimenting, basically. You know? Yeah. You know? So when did you realize that you can sing? Cause I realized at a very young age, I cannot sing. So like, yeah. kind of, how did that, how did that work out for you? Like, when did you re like, what was the moment where you're like, Oh, okay. I know how to sing. Yeah. I was in choir actually in like elementary school and I sucked at it. Yeah. Um, like I would always get like, I don't know. It just was not, I, I'm not good. I was not good at choir. I don't, yeah. I don't really know why, like just the way I sing and, um, 
but yeah, when I started like seeing when in church, we were doing these like, you know, like worship songs and stuff. And, and I was like, Oh, I want to learn how to sing that. And then people just started telling me like, Oh, you got a pretty good voice, you know? Yeah. And, and I just rolled with it, you know? Sure. Um, so I don't know. I don't know the exact moment. I was yeah. Maybe like a, what, 10 or 11, you know, yeah. when I sort of started figuring it out. So you kind of started figuring it out in church. And then I would assume there's other influences. Like you had, you had uh, other artists or groups that you liked and you listened to. So, you know, who have been some of your biggest musical influences, both, you know, past and current? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so my dad would listen to like a lot of ZZ Top and mm-hmm. um, they liked like Jimmy Buffett and, um, you know, uh, country music, George Strait and Garth yeah. Brooks. And, um, and I, like, for instance, Jimmy Buffett, like, I don't really <laughs> like his, his news is like, like the stuff my parents like, but the other mm-hmm. day I was, I was like listening to some of the stuff like when he first started, like in the seventies and mm-hmm. it's, it's awesome. You is know? it? Yeah. Yeah. It's like really, really good. Um, but then, you know, he sort of commercialized himself sure. and, and did, they started making a whole bunch of money. So I can't really <laughs> blame him for that, but, um, but yeah, I mean, nowadays, you know, I, I listen to really kind of everything from, mm-hmm. you know, electronic music to, a little bit of rap and but a lot of like uh funk and uh, rock and roll and singer songwriter folk country yeah. um you know little feet is one of my favorite bands and uh you know waylon, Jen- waylon jennings willie nelson steve earl yeah um you know i could keep going you know I yeah know. i I think the reason why, when you kind of started dabbling in music, I think one of the reasons that I like your music so much is I grew up listening to Steve Earle, so kind of the, that country rock ish kind of kind of blend, and then the true singer songwriter with lyrics and stories and and stuff right. like that. And you know, in kind of the commercialized world of music, granted, I, I don't live in this world at all, but you kind of lose that essence of music right now. And so when you yeah. get people like yourself or you know, there's so many people that are still doing it, but they're just not as, as big. And so, you know, I've, I've been to a couple of your shows. I've really enjoyed them. And I've also enjoyed kind of the evolution of you over the last decade, roughly. Um, I think Mm -hmm. your music is very honest to who you are in your story, which is, you know, the whole point of being a singer, singer songwriter, right. He's kind of painting those stories. And so, so yeah, so I, I personally am a fan I love what you're doing. Uh, I also love following you on social media, like when you're playing the guitar, because I have no music capabilities. <laughs> so I kind of just live vicariously through that capability. Um, sure. But let's circle back to kind of your band. So you mentioned that you had kind of experimented with music and, and different bands, like an emo band when you were younger. Now you're kind of in this uh, country rock and roll kind of band. But like, when did you decide that you were going to pursue a band um, and be a group? Um, yeah, I don't, my band sort of switches out, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know. I think for, for when I first started writing songs, it was just like kind of for me, you know, Mm -hmm. like I, so I got serious about writing songs, like maybe like 10 years ago or Mm -hmm. maybe nine years ago, um, kind of correlated with sewering up. Um, and I like had this desire to, you know, like, I, for so long I had like lied to myself and lied to other people. And, um, I was just sort of living a just unhealthy, uh, you know, dishonest life. And, mm-hmm. um, and when I sewed up, it was like really important for me to be honest and, um, be honest with myself and like be honest with my feelings. Sure. And, uh, and music was like that outlet for me. Um, mm-hmm. and it was that, it was that tool for me. Um, and I started gravitating towards like folk music because it's sort of, in my opinion, like the most like raw and, um, honest, you know, lyrically and and composition wise music that there is, you know, um, it's not, not to discredit anything else, but 
Um, so yeah, I started like writing with just me and my guitar. And then after I made like uh, my first record and like had some experience with a band in the studio, I was like, Oh man, I really want to like evolve this, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so I started meeting like more and more musicians and playing with more and more musicians. And, and now I like, I hardly ever play solo, you know? Yeah. Um, and I have like a, a, a group of musicians that I play with. Cause you know, like most of the guys I play with are like what we call hired guns. So they're, um, like, you know, guys that they go on the road with a bunch of different artists. So mm -hmm. if someone's busy, then I have someone else that can kind of fill their shoes. But I do have like guys that I are my first call, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and guys that sort of maybe prioritize me over others or whatever, you know? Sure. Um, so yeah, and now I, I love it now. And it kind of has informed also the, the type of music I'm writing and the, and the records I'm making, mm -hmm. you know, cause the band live sort of takes, takes the songs and takes them to a different place. And then mm -hmm. that, um, that sort of informs what we record and, or, or where, or I, I have the band in mind when I'm writing, you mm -hmm. know? Um, nice. so it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I honestly, um, probably it, this quarantine has been weird. Cause like, I haven't been able to play with anybody, you know? Yeah, um, that's true. I, you know, and I've, I've done like some online, like live shows and stuff playing by myself and, you know, they're kind of whatever, you know, um, you know, make, make a little money and like get to interact a little bit, but, um, it's just like not the same, obviously, sure. you know, um, so, but playing by myself has been a good exercise because I haven't had to do it much in the past, like four years. Yeah. So, you know, going back to kind of when you first sat down, kind of made a record, when you sit down to create a record, well, let me ask you this. Can record and album be used interchangeably? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just need to make sure. So yeah. when you sit down to write a record or an album, you know, do you have a process in place or is it kind of like you're one of those people that's kind of sporadic where you have an idea, you sit down, you execute it. And then another idea may come later. Or do you kind of just try to see the whole album through in one long exercise? Um, so like, I sort of am of the belief that like creativity can just sort of hit you wherever you are, like in the shower, or, you know, driving in the car mm -hmm. or whatever, you know? So for me, if I like feel that urge or get that idea or whatever, I have to like write it down immediately or mm -hmm. like record it on a voice memo or something like that, or else I'll forget it. Yeah. Um, and so I do a lot of that. Like I do a lot of just recording like little ideas on, um, you know, voice memo I use all the time on, on an iPhone. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and then like, I'll sit down with those ideas and like start to flush them out. And mm -hmm. then, and like making a record when I know I have to, you know, I know I want like 10 songs to be finished to record, you know, then I'll, I work well, like on a deadline, you know, yeah. I, I kind of like, um, otherwise I'm, I'll just procrastinate, you know? So if I know I need to like have, I'm very task-based. So I, if I know I need to have this done by this time, then I can sit down and go through those ideas mm -hmm. and flesh them out, you know, start to plan the production, start to plan the instrumentation. And, uh, and sometimes too, I'll co-write with people, you know, um, I wasn't really comfortable doing that until the last like few years, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, I, th I think I kind of answered your question. Yeah, no, no, no. Really it's, I mean, it's I such a, it it's, it's a world that I don't know. So I'm always kind of intrigued, yeah. like how people do it. Cause I can't imagine people just like sit down and like go somewhere for a week and record a whole album. I have no idea. I, I feel mean, like that'd be very people, hard. Some people do that. Like, yeah. you know, everyone has their own process and I have friends too that like, you know, they work, they're songwriters, you know, that's, that's what they do. Um, or they like work for a publishing company or something like that. And they literally go in five days a week, eight to five, and they write songs with other people, you wow. know, that was a job, you know? Yeah. Um, and you know, some people work like that. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not disciplined enough to do yeah. that. Um, like I, I wasn't, 
I wasn't good at school, you know, probably for the same reason, you know, I wasn't either. So um, don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't, uh, I was very bad at school. You did, you went to college though. So you actually, uh, I you mean, were a little better than I was. I barely, I think I, I barely got by. Um, <laughs> I graduated and I crossed that stage in high school. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. That was, that was a big feat, but, um, I think everyone kind of comes into their own at different times, like college for me. I think I kind of figured things out not even academically, just in general, like the world seemed to kind of click for me. And um, so, yeah, so I think everyone kind of comes into their own at different times. And, you know, you found music when you were like seriously at like what, 20, 21? Yeah, about 20, probably, yeah. you know, that's when I started, started getting serious about like writing songs and like being a musician, mm -hmm. you know, um, before I always say like I used being a musician is like a reason to not have a real job or not have like a, a, a conventional um, uh, motivation, you know, mm -hmm. or aspiration, you know. Um, and then when I, yeah, when I was 20 and I got sober, it, it sort of uh, occurred to me that it was like the thing that I needed to do and mm -hmm. Um, the thing that I was best at and I just needed to sort of foster that. And, yeah, for sure. And you've been, you've been sober nine years, right? Yeah. 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 It'll be, it'll be nine years next month. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Like that's Thank definitely you. something you should be proud of. And, you know, people have their obstacles and, and whatnot. And, you know, now you're down, you know, a great path, doing great things, making great music. And so with that, it's kind of brought you down a cool path. And one thing musicians do is they go on tour. And so I've seen you on tour, like down in Texas a few times in Houston, but you know, what's one of your favorite things about touring and playing live? Um, yeah, I mean, just one thing is just getting to like, see a bunch of different things, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, get to, you know, I've been to cities that like, otherwise I would never have gone to like, like, I think, I think Des Moines, Iowa is a pretty cool city. I would have never gone to Des Moines. You yeah. Know? <laughs> um, you know, uh, Providence, Rhode Island, I probably would have never gone there, but I think that's like one of the coolest cities in the country too. It is. It's yeah. a great city. Yeah. I love Providence. Um, and like, I have friends there now. That's another cool thing. It's like, I have friends everywhere, you know, yeah. because of, because of music and because of touring. And, um, you know, I get to go, like I spent, like two and a half months last year in, uh, or about two months last year in, in Europe, um, like a, a while in the UK and then like Norway and Sweden. And, nice. Um, like I probably wouldn't have done that either. Um, so that's definitely one of the things that I, I like most is just meeting people. And, um, cause if it was like totally, I'm sort of an introvert. So if I didn't have to like go out and do that, you know, <laughs> if I had a, if I had like a eight to five or nine to five, whatever uh, job, um, I probably would just do that and come home. You know? yeah. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't get to meet all these people because I don't have the motivation to do that. You know? And how do you guys like chart out or decide where you're going to go on tour? Like, do you have any idea of like where most of your music is listened to, or do you guys just go wherever you kind of feel like going or how does that work? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it has to do with like a few things. Um, some of it's random. Um, mm -hmm. some of it is like, Oh, okay. We're, we got this like anchor date is what we refer to it as like, maybe it's like a big festival or something. Mm -hmm. And then like, okay, we got that. Let's just sort of plan around it, you know, or, yeah. or like, oh, radio is spending you a lot, like in these markets, you know, why don't we go there? Um, or I had one more thing, but it's, it's, uh, it's leaving me now. Um, those are sort of the main, or, or like Spotify or whatever, like yep. you're able to see like, oh, you're getting streamed a lot in Dallas or, mm -hmm. um, most of the time though, it is like, okay, you got this festival, you got this anchor date or whatever, and we're just going to sort of plan around it. And, um, and, you know, and like the, my, my agent will know, like, um, no venues that I don't know of, or like, you know, um, we'll go on tour with a band as support, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, 
know, opening up for him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a bunch of different, bunch of different things. Yeah. Let me ask you this. If you could play anywhere, any venue, no matter how big or small, you can give me multiple if you want. Is there anywhere that you think of? Um, I would really love to play the Ryman one day in Nashville. Um, it's like, it's where they do the Grand Ole Opry now. Yeah. And it's kind of just like, it's such a cool venue. Mm-hmm. Um, and not only is there like history there, but it just sounds great. And like the way they have it set up is amazing. Um, nice. You know, one day I would also like to play the Woodlands Pavilion. That'd be um, sweet. Just cause like, you know, I, I've seen so many shows there and, um, you know, my, my family's there and, yeah. you know, it would, it would be, I don't think I will ever be headlining the Women's Pavilion, but I like, maybe I could open up for somebody there one day. Um, yeah, those two would be really cool. Um, Billy Bob's in Fort Worth is another place I've never played that I would like to play. Yep. Red Rocks would be fucking awesome. Can I cuss on this? That's fine. That's fine. Okay, yeah. Sorry. I won't. Uh, yeah, no, Red Rocks. I was supposed to go to quite a few shows kind of starting in April and they've all been canceled. So I'm pretty bummed, but, yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, that, I mean, that'd be pretty sweet. Let me ask you this though, because like, I'm not a musician and I've seen a million shows at uh, the Woodlands Pavilion, but like, how is it like acoustically, like as a musician, like, how does it sound to you? Does it sound good? It sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think they do a pretty good job there. Yeah. Um, I don't know any of those places that are like, there's a lot of money behind that place, you know, and they have some huge acts and like you actually hear like my dad used to be on a, on a board there for Mm -hmm. a few years. And he just kept saying like, every musician loves playing here. Yeah. Really? Like that's why like Dave Matthews, he plays there every year. Every year. Um, You know, it's, it's one of his favorite places to play in the world. You know, um, I've seen how it's set up, how it sounds. Um, nice. and, and him, he likes playing like those outdoor. Yeah. That's kind of his thing. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen such cr- for being like a venue, like in the middle of the suburbs, I've seen like crazy shows, whether like you would consider them good acts or not. But like, I've seen, I remember seeing in sync there and like the spice girls, yeah. like think about how famous, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. like how famous they were. I've seen like, god smack there i've seen Lil yeah. wayne there like you know it was in, it's incredible the people that come through there and yeah i don't know i consider myself pretty lucky that we had that venue pretty close um yeah definitely yeah my it's funny my parents were like i said my dad was on the board there so they like they went to like every show almost yeah. for a while like shows that they they would just go because they had tickets so they would just go like not knowing yeah. who it was and like they always talk about how much they loved Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're like, "Oh, Pitbull is so good." You know, Pitbull so, is so good. He's our favorite. I know um, a few people that saw him like at the rodeo a couple years ago. Whenever he was there, and it was kind of the same yeah. thing. Like people were just like, oh, "I'm just gonna go because I got tickets." Like, sure. And people like came back being like, "It was a, <laughs> it was a really good show." Yeah, I haven't it's seen bizarre. him. So yeah, I mean, either I can't, I can't <laughs> say it. I can't say that I have list i probably couldn't name you a pitbull song but um, <laughs> you know I each their own i guess one of actually now that we're talking about the pavilion i just thought about this i remember seeing i was super young i remember seeing destiny's child open up for christina aguilera oh, like wow. like talk <laughs> about some weird times but anyway yeah so it's cool. kind of taking me down memory lane there i was talking to someone yeah. today about random concerts at the pavilion so i guess it's just time to talk about the pavilion but (laughs) all right so i don't want to take too much of your time but i do want to ask you a couple more questions you know sure you kind of talked about um what you're doing during this time but are like i know you're writing but are you proactively writing for a record or are you just kind of creating those ideas right now yeah i'm just sort of jotting down ideas and, Mm -hmm. and stuff like that i i actually finished a record last like late last year Mm -hmm. um and it was sort of supposed to be coming out like this summer and I was supposed to be touring and stuff like yep. that. And obviously uh, everything's canceled right now. So, <laughs> um, you know, we, uh, we, I, I hope to be releasing some new music like early July and nice. 
but we're just kind of trying to figure out um like unique ways to release it and uh, since yeah. it's obviously a unique time with because the way artists make money nowadays is touring you know yeah. you don't you don't make money off your records anymore unless you're you know whoever someone giant, Jonas Brothers you know? yeah Jonas Brothers which they probably don't really make that much either but they That's actually crazy. do make money on Spotify like yeah um because they get like millions of streams um right. but Spotify pays you like fractions of a cent per, per stream you know right. so for like a musician like me or even like a few tiers above me like that's how you make money is on the road you know yeah. um so when you take that out of the equation like releasing a record is to me it's basically like to get more people to come to your live shows yeah um so we have to just kind of figure out how to optimize releasing music right now and, and yeah. how it, we can make it still work for us in a way um, yeah and so we're going to go on tour. So where were you going to go before everything got canceled? Did you know yet? Um, just probably all over the U.S. I mean, yeah. we was, it was sort of like preliminarily, we were, we were preliminarily talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, once like March hit, um, you know, we stopped talking about it. <laughs> you know? uh, I was lucky though. Like, you know, I had friends that, you know, were releasing a record like, in March and then yeah. and then they had like I had a friend that had a nine month tour planned Ooh. um and and he was releasing a record in March nine months on the road and it's all canceled you know it's tough uh, yeah it's it's so I was lucky in that regard that I didn't necessarily like lose a bunch of money you know yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah it still stinks you know yeah, I guess those are things I would have never thought of, you know, like I didn't necessarily think that musicians or artists made money on tour necessarily. Yeah. Like I thought it was more 50 50. So this could be detrimental to the artists yeah, depending. It, it's going to be interesting to see just like, I, I mean, no one knows. Like, I mean, people forget that, you know, all these people are complaining that they want to go back to work, go back to work, go back to work. But like, artists and and uh you know just even people that just work in the live music industry um people that work at venues people like guitar techs or whatever yeah. like they're not going back to work for a long time yeah like, people people are telling me right now like you're not going to be touring till at least next year you know yeah uh, and and also like what is touring going to look like when it does Go, go back. come back you know like are people even gonna want to go to shows are people you know gonna want to go somewhere where it, you know they have to stand six feet apart or whatever you know are our, our venues gonna feel like it's worth it to open up at 25 percent of capacity you know yeah. um, they might lose actually lose money doing stuff like that so yeah. i don't know it's like a really it's going to be interesting to see how everyone adapts after this. Um, yeah. And it's going yeah, to be interesting to see how it normalizes, you know. For sure. Yeah, I have, like I said, I have I've, all of my concerts like through July. And it's not like I have like a billion, but like I had a couple are canceled. I have one in August that just got canceled today. And I have one yeah. more in August that hasn't gotten canceled. So I don't know what's going to happen to that one. But yeah. outside of that, yeah, I think everything is just like, like the one that got canceled today was like, who is it? It was Breaking Benjamin, Theory of a Dead Man, like those guys, they just canceled mm -hmm. their tour. Like a lot of them are pushing it and they just canceled it outright. So yeah, it's not looking good, I guess is my point. Yeah, I had a, I was supposed to like, see Sturgill Simpson and Tyler Childers. Um, yeah, yeah. In LA, like it was like May 8th or something like that. Yeah. They had a whole tour. Um, and they just canceled the whole thing, you know, Ugh. so they didn't even reschedule it in October or whatever. By the way, I'm supposed to be getting a refund for that. And <laughs> I, haven't I haven't gotten, gotten my refunds yet either. So yeah, don't they told me 30 days. So yeah, I, I forgot about that. I need to keep checking. <laughs> yeah. Get your refunds, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Or, or mine have been rescheduled, which is fine. But now I'm kind of like, 
you know, you have no idea when something's getting rescheduled for November, like what do I have going yeah. on when work gets back to normal and stuff like that. So who knows, but you know, for the sake of you guys and, and even just you specifically hope it gets back to normal sooner than later, but yeah. it will be interesting to see how it pans out. But yeah, definitely. I know right now you're trying to get creative ways of getting your music out there, um, getting some more exposure, fans, stuff like that. So where can people follow you, listen to you, all of that? Um, yeah, so sammorrowmusic.com sort of has all of the all the links and stuff, Instagram and, and Facebook and um, Spotify or anywhere that you listen to music, it's on there. Amazon, Pandora, whatever nice. it is, Apple. Um, and yeah, if you like vinyl records, I have some on my site and if you still listen to CDs, not too many people do under the age of 60. Um, <laughs> I don't even have, I just got a new car and, uh, it doesn't even have a CD player in it. Yeah. Mine doesn't either. Yeah. I think it's been like the last couple of years. They just said, no, we're not going to do that anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, they'll probably make a comeback in like 20 years, you know? People Everything like, does. Oh, CDs, man. I mean, like, vinyl did, you know, I, I, I love listening to vinyl and, um, and even like some people listen to cassettes now, you know? Like well, cassettes so I was popular. about to, I was about to say, so something gimmicky, I'm a big Jonas Brothers fan. People can judge me for what it's worth. But for their last album, they came out with like vinyls, CDs, and cassettes. And cassettes, I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, who who the hell is gonna buy cassettes? And I guess tons of people like I don't have a cassette player anywhere. Like I would have to yeah, go buy it. I'd have to go yeah. buy one. And uh Yeah, it's it's kinda my friend owns a record store and you know, he's he sells like vintage cassette players, you know, all these vintage like hi fi gear. Yeah. And it's it's cool, like an old cool like cassette boom box it looks awesome and it, it sounds awesome. it sounds really you know you don't notice because like we listen to obviously listen i listen to most of my music on the computer or on mm -hmm. spotify or, um but then you go back and you listen to like a vinyl record or you listen to a cassette and it just sounds so much better vinyl you know? for sure i haven't listened to a cassette yeah. since cassette too like and vinyl like I, uh, you know, obviously I, I think it's, it has like a presence and is like warmer than, um, you know, like Spotify or streaming or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and also you can just, it's kind of nice, like hold something, you yeah. know, <laughs> um, and even like you can, you, sometimes the needle skips and, you know, you can hear like a little bit of like, uh, like natural static on a record, yeah. um, it's just like more human, more human. Raw. You know? I was going to say raw, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah raw. it's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. We grew up, my dad had a pretty sweet like um, setup when we were kids. And so, yeah, a lot of vinyls. And then he always had in his car, like this big box, like we used to have CD boxes, but his was like a cassette box. And so, uh -huh. yeah. So I think back on those, like when I think of cassettes, mostly cassettes, a little bit CDs, like nostalgia and just, different times it doesn't like i don't know enough about music to be like it sounds better or it sounds different um but yeah. i i think of good times my first cassette was actually backstreet boys so uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I encourage people to like you know get a record player and um you know if you if you really like music and like me personally i'll listen to something on spotify or i'll listen to somebody's release on spotify and if i like it I buy the record to support. Oh, nice. It. Yeah. Um, it's just a good way to like just sort of support artists and, you know, stay it's connected. And, um, you know, or just go buy a shirt or whatever. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I guess Spotify well, doesn't pay you anything. You know? That's a good point. So we can buy vinyls, we can buy shirts, you know, other ways to support you guys during this time. Last question. If you had one album you had to listen to for the rest of your life. Oof. What would it be? Um, Maybe I'll give you two. Maybe I'll give you two. Um, I would say probably Little Feet, uh, uh, Waiting for Columbus, which is a live record that they mm -hmm. did. Nice. Or ZZ Top, um, 
Rio Grande Mud, I think, would be. Uh, there's so many. It's there's really so many. I knew this would be a those hard question. First, those are just the first two that come to mind. But cool. I actually just got asked to do that thing on Facebook where you just like post a record a day for ten days, and yeah, I just like haven't done it because I. <laughs> Well, for one, I think it's kind of lame. And for two, like I don't know what I would pick. You know, I don't. I don't know. Well, I I would be. In, a lot of people are doing it, and I kind of am like, okay, cool. But I would be intrigued. Someone like you, because you are a musician. Yeah. There's a lot more thought into it than just like, oh, like for me, I'm just like, like I like really this song. Smart. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so yeah, uh, so for me, like it's you know, records like like music follows me throughout my life. You know, yeah. and like it'll take me back like to a time, you know? Yeah. So it's hard to, it's hard to nail down. Like, like I have stuff that I'm listening to right now, yeah. but like, I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Well, no, it would be okay. hard. It would be hard. <laughs> Definitely. But bringing it back, bringing it, you back to a time. So today in a meeting, we had, our customers in new Orleans. And so since it was virtual, we had all these, um, breaks. So we would just play like local new Orleans, mostly jazz music, like Mm -hmm. artists. And then all of a sudden Lil Wayne came on the, Uh, (laughs) the, the mix and the guy who was running it stepped away from the computer. So like we couldn't do anything about it, but Uh I will (laughs) say all of a sudden I felt like it was 2007 and it was a great time. So, yeah, yeah I there's songs myself. that remind me of like specific summers or like, um, like that that song "Buy You a Drink" was like oh, summer, by of, Pain. <laughs> summer of 2006 or whatever that was, you know. Um, you know, there's tons of songs like that or like songs that will even like bring me back to specific moments. Yeah. You know? um, so buy you a drink every time that <laughs> comes on if you remember stephanie kamstra that was like our jam when we were in high school and so i still screenshot it to her every single uh, time yeah. and i'm did just you like ever it's so see that um do you ever watch like npr tiny desk have you ever seen those yeah movies? yeah i i don't watch it consistently but if someone's on there that i know or like i'll tune in i think it was like two years ago or around there t-pain did one of those and it was amazing he can sing like, like he actually yeah, can sing. he can yeah. actually sing and it's so good he did buy you a drink on it too <laughs> yeah yeah i know it what you're talking about now awesome. yeah. it was like kind of acoustic you know how they had it set up i mean they're literally just playing in an office yeah, know, yeah yeah so, um I, it was awesome i highly recommend watching that i um i saw him open up <laughs> for chris brown when i was in college and uh, um, you were a big i remember you being a big <laughs> chris brown fan yeah. Big Chris Brown fan. Had to kind of let it go, though, when he beat Rihanna. Yeah, yeah. I digress. But he opened up for Chris Brown, and he kind of went on this rant. I don't know if there was something going on, but T-Pain went on this giant rant of, like, people think I can't sing, yada, yada. And so he just sang, like, his normal songs without autotune, uh, almost like a gospel twist to it. Yeah. Um, and I was stunned. Like, I was sitting there just, yeah. like, I couldn't believe what I was watching, and it kind of gives you a whole nother level of respect to him. Not that I didn't respect him, but I kind of just, you know, all right, auto tune. Cool. And then he did that. And it, yeah, I was the, the thing with like, that with auto tune, like the way he used it, he used it as like an effect. You right. Know? Right. Um, and, but a lot of people, obviously it gets overused now and a lot of people use it so that it makes them sound like they can sing. Right. You know, and that's where he, that's where you go wrong. You yeah. know. Uh, but T Pain used it. He was like the one of the first ones to really do that. Like might have been the first. I don't know. Um and uh yeah, but he used it as like a thing. Like that was his thing. You know, yeah. that's 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 how he wanted his music to sound. Not like, oh, I have a shitty voice, I'm gonna, you know, make it sound good by putting it through a computer, you know, <laughs> or putting it through Melodyne or Auto Tune or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um but yeah, he's great. You know, <laughs> <T-Pain>, man. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to go watch the SNL skit of "I'm on a boat with." Him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's watch it? that tiny desk too. It's tiny really desk? cool. Yeah, it's really all right. Cool. I'll ha- I I remember I remember that happening. Um, but I'll have to give it a look now because I'm gonna yeah. go down like a deep dark hole of T-Pain songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Well, cool. I mean, I really appreciate you coming on. I've just kind of with this podcast, I've been trying to get like tons of different people and yeah. uh, you were That's one of- That's really the- cool. It's really cool that you're doing this and I appreciate you having me. 
yeah, I appreciate you coming on. I, I know you do interviews and, and stuff like that. So, you know, this is just kind of you giving your time and I appreciate it. And um, oh, sure. yeah. I'll be definitely on the lookout for your new music. I know you have an album that you're kind of just waiting to release, but I, I definitely yeah. have liked everything so far. And I've liked kind of the journey that your music has taken I guess when I say us, the listeners on. Um, and so, you know, if, if anyone wants to continue and tune in on what Sam is up to, I'll be kind of tweeting and posting on Instagram on trailblazing text about what he's up to as well. So between his social media, my social media, you know, you can keep up with what he's doing. And as he mentioned before, supporting artists in any shape, way or form during this crazy time. And so, um, with that, yeah, I appreciate you coming on and, um, you know, I hope to see you out on the road soon. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was really good talking to you. Yeah. Likewise. All right. I'll talk to you soon. All righty.